Hello Game Gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Captain. I'm Lynn. And today we're going to be counting down our top 10 favorite games where you build something. Um, so th th <laughs> this is a bit of a like um, amorphous, you know, ephemeral sort of concept. We didn't give uh, jointly a bunch of rules to this. Uh, did you enforce any extra rules on yourself when making this? No. List? So yours is like all over the place. <laughs> yeah. All right. So for me, I restricted myself to games where you, not, not just that you're building something, but you really feel like the game captures the theme of actually building that thing. Mm -hmm. So like if there's a game where you're building something, but it doesn't really feel like you're building it, I nixed it. I was like, I'm not doing that game. Also, uh, anything where you communally build something, um, again, nixed it. It has to be you building something for me. Uh, you didn't put any kind of restrictions like that in on yourself? No. So these these might be very different lists then. Um, curious to see how this goes. How was this for you putting it together? Um, it was pretty easy. Mm -hmm. I um, Is that because you had it so loose? Yeah. I had 16 um, games on my list and mm -hmm. then I just, I went through them and I was like, Sure, you're building something, but you're not like, you know, building, building it. So I like crossed it off. Oh, so you, you did know? do that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of like what I was doing. down. Yeah, that's kind of what I was doing a little. Except I was doing it right at the beginning. Like I was like, oh, you're putting something together there, but does it really feel like you're building mm -hmm. it? And then I would nix it. Um, so, all right. Well, uh, do you want to go first or second? I'll go first. Okay. So without any further ado, we're going to be getting to our number 10s. Number 10. <clears throat> My number 10 is Era. Does this have a subtitle? Medieval Age. Okay. Era Medieval Age. It's got little pegs <laughs> and you you put the the houses in the pegs and you make a village. You're making like a medieval city. <laughs> yeah. You're you're you it has this like pro, press your luck dice element where you're rolling dice to try to get the materials to feed your people. And also buy materials to get more buildings. Some buildings let you get more dice. Yeah. Uh, but it does really feel like you're building a medieval well, city. You well, build you walls. And, oh, you yeah. You got the pegs. Oh, the yeah. It's, it, yeah, it uses a pegboard and a bunch of buildings mm -hmm. you put in it. No, good choice. Uh, anything else you want to say about med Era Medieval Age? Because that is a really cool game where you build a medieval city, build walls around it. And basically, you're trying to get your city to be the best. In, in uh, One, you want to get the right buildings to help you build more and build faster but two you want to get the buildings that are going to be worth the po best points at the end of the game which require yeah. you to have certain combinations and certain placements of buildings well isn't there also something where like if you have a field outside the walls it like does different stuff than if it's inside the walls yes and same thing with, so with you residences to, you, know. you have to decide whether it's worth it or not to so have surround them, things with walls have them undefended so yeah no uh very cool love our medieval age um is that yeah that's you? it my number 10 is a game that I know will not cross over with Lynn. There is 0.0% per <laughs> chance of this crossing over with Lynn. Uh, it is Martian Rails. It is a game where you're building railroads across Mars. Uh, it is part of the old um, crayon rail system uh, series of games that was put out by Mayfair when they were in existence. I do not believe this one has come back in print since Mayfair went under. So to find this, you'd have to find a used copy. But the short version is you are using crayons on a board that, that you can draw on with crayons and easily erase from uh, to literally build railways connecting Martian cities and a fictional version of Mars with tons of references to old school sci-fi Martian uh, books. They have references to like the Barsoom or John Carter of Mars <laughs> series. They have references to, to like... Uh, the Chronicles of Mars, um, they have, you know, all, all sorts of different references to old school sci-fi in it. And it was very characterful and very fun, and I really enjoyed it. But it, <laughs> it had a unique play style that if you weren't into its play style, you may not like it as much as me. In fact, amongst my gaming group, Lynn included, I by far was the one who liked <clears throat> it the most. Lynn did not like this one, which mm -hmm. is why I know there's no chance of crossover. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that fair to say? Yes. Number nine. My number nine is Junk Art. Mm. And this is a dexterity game with wooden 3D pieces that um, you have to either build the highest or there's different 
Um, There's different scenarios. Different throughout. categories yeah. where it tells you what you need to do. Well, also, also there's different scenarios where it totally changes how the game plays because sometimes it's real time, sometimes it's turn based, sometimes it's communal. You're building with other people, sometimes you're building your own. Mm -hmm. But in all the cases, you're building a piece of junk art. Yeah. I didn't put this one in because of the communal aspect as well as the fact that um, it just felt like a stacking game to me. It, it, it didn't capture the whole building feeling to me, but okay. it was one I considered. Uh, anything else you want to say about... It's basically a dexterity game. Yeah, I, you, just, I said it was a dexterity game. That's fair. Anything else you want to say about Junk Art? No. Okay. Uh, that was your number nine, yes? Mm -hmm. My number nine is Torres. This is a game where you are building three-dimensional castles and towers. Torres means towers in Spanish. On a board, you are actually moving your pieces around, building it up, and then at the end of each round, you score based on where your pieces are. So you want to build them up high, and then you want to climb up to the tops of the towers, uh, because basically being at a high point in a tower allows you to get points equal to the height of the tower times how much space the base of the, the castle takes up. So being high in a big castle gets you lots of points. There's other ways to get bonus points. For having guys on certain levels, <laughs> etc. But uh, overall, it's about literally building these castles and towers. Mm -hmm. Now, this is another one I know you're not a huge fan of because of the mathiness of mm -hmm. it. Is, is that a... Too much math. Too much math. I was going to say, that's why I knew there's not going to be a huge amount of crossover. Because actually, a lot <laughs> of the ones I like about building stuff, for some reason, have like something in them where you're not a big fan of them. So this is going to be actually very different lists, mostly. Number eight... My number eight is Railroad Rivals. Okay. Because you are building the tri the railroad across the United States. Yeah, yeah. You put the tiles down. Each tile is, you know, they're cities, and then city. you got to put the, the the little trains on the across the edge of the tiles to build the railroad, basically. Mm -hmm. I thought of this one. It didn't feel enough like building something to me for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. I, it's not something I can put into words, but it was one I considered and went. I don't know if it captures the feeling to me. Like, I love that game. Don't get me wrong. This is like a nine-star game for me. Um, anything else you want to say on Railroad Rivals, though, before I totally monopolize your entry here? No, I mean, you are... I mean, it's possible to skip stuff. Maybe yeah. that's why it doesn't feel like... Because, like, if you, if you start in, like, New Orleans, like, you can, like, totally skip something, like, I don't, it, right I think, in the middle. I think it's because the game has kind of a very abstract sort of play style, which I love. Don't get me wrong. This is a game I like a lot. It just didn't capture the building feeling enough for me to okay. be on my list. I, I think it, this is a, just a very arbitrary thing of mine. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, it's not, it, it, it's not even really something I can tangibly put my finger on okay. but it didn't quite it was one i considered but then didn't quite make my list my number eight favorite game where you build something is a game where you're building a cave residence in a farm it is caverna uh this is a game uh caverna cave farmers you are uh mythical dwarves uh building a cave residence you have to dig out the mines and find resources as well as build a farm and build pens for animals and grow vegetables and things like that as well uh, it's also got a lot of resource management and the animals and stuff. In addition to having them, you can sacrifice them for their meat and, and to be able to feed your people. Uh, but it's 100% building out the home and building out the farm is what the game is about. And it really well, really well captures that feeling for me. Because like mm -hmm. it, when, you, when you're playing Caverna, you do feel like you are full on simulation wise building your farm and, and cave home. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that make sense? Yeah. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah. I wonder if this one's a crossover. It's not. Oh, you didn't? Did you <laughs> I, not think of it? I didn't think of it, no. You didn't? Oh, I was going to say, because I know you like Caverna. That's yeah. one of the ones I thought might have been a crossover. I guess not. Number seven. My number seven is Kodama. Because mm -hmm. you're building a tree on the table of cards. Okay. <laughs> well, you are. Okay, so you're growing a tree. <laughs> what? <laughs> You don't build a tree. But you put but you put different cards down as the different branches. Yes. But the tree grows. You uh, don't build it. It didn't feel like building to me oh. because you don't build a tree. You Does grow anything a tree. feel like building to you? Yes, the ones on my list. Okay. Uh, do you want to talk more about Kadama, about how you draft the cards well, and grow your tree? Well, you draft <clears> cards and you, you Grow your tree. That's apparently. right. You, you do grow your tree. Cause, cause who builds a tree? You build a house. You grow a tree. Well, 
Whatever. Uh, <laughs> no, it's a very fun game. Uh, you, you draft cards to be able to grow the tree and you have like little, since you're not talking about it, you have little symbols on either the trunk or the branch cards that um, continuing them on from branch to branch unbroken, like mushrooms or on each card or fireflies on each card allow you to earn points when playing the card. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have hidden objectives uh, to have, you know, branches at certain lengths, a certain number of, of symbols to show up, you know, uh, etc. that get you bonus points at the end. This is a really fun game. This is when we played the heck out of when we first got it. And um, yeah, so totally understand why it's on your list. But it didn't make my list because you grow a tree. Uh, so that's number seven, right? Mm -hmm. My number seven is Lords of Vegas. This is a game where you build hotel and casinos in Las Vegas, preferably on the Vegas Strip if you can. Uh, occasionally do mergers and hostile takeovers of neighboring casinos and literally merge them into yours. Um, this one is a lot of fun. It is very competitive. It has a bit of randomness, but it also um, feels characterful with the randomness because it's it's about casinos and gambling. Uh, but it's also specifically about building those hotel and casinos. Um, and it really captures it for me. You, you get the lots and then you have to develop them. You have to build the buildings. And... Um, I thoroughly enjoy uh, Lords of Vegas. It is why it is my number seven on my list. Anything you want to say on Lords of Vegas? This was one that I crossed off because I was like, you're just putting a tile on a square. That's not really building. <laughs> it feels like building to me. I guess okay. it doesn't to you. Number six. My number six is Dastardly Dirigibles. Oh, this is a good one. I didn't think of this. So you have this long board with like, I don't know, seven or eight sections. And you're drafting cards into your hand to put down and build a dirigible. Yes. Each, sec each card is a section of the dirigible. And it does feel like you're building the dirigible. Mm -hmm. I thoroughly agree. I forgot I forgot about this game. You're, you're, you're trying to either build a dirigible with, with most of the cards being from a certain suit. The different suits look like different sorts of dirigibles. Mm -hmm. Like there's a steampunk one and there's a more fantasy looking one and, you know, all different things. Or you can do a muddle where every card is a different suit with no wild cards. Yeah. Which gets you like a like 20 points or something. Yes, it's a flat 20 points. Yeah. My number six is a game that I will cry, cry absolute foul if it's not a crossover. <laughs> okay. This better be on your list because I know how much you love the game and how much it is about building something. Okay. It is Baron Park. It is a game that <laughs> makes so many of our lists, both of us, because we both love this game. If this isn't, isn't higher on your list, I'm going to cry okay. foul. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's on your list higher. Okay. But it's a game where you you place, you start out with a handful of polyominoes. Um, the bigger, the, po uh, the polyominoes all represent things. Uh, small ones could represent things like just like bathrooms or little shops or restaurants, whereas they get bigger, they, they represent bear enclosures and bear habitats. Um, and you're building a bear park, a bear zoo, and you place them on your board and try to cover all the spaces. And as you cover other symbols, they allow you to draft more polyominoes or up more boards. Uh, and you want to keep filling up those boards. The first person to fill up four boards triggers the end of the game, one final round. And the quicker you have drafted the polyominoes, generally the more points they are worth. So you're, it's like a race to build the bear zoo the quickest. Mm -hmm. Uh, this game is a ton of fun. Absolutely adore it. I know you adore it too. Mm -hmm. And I am guessing that since you haven't said anything, it's going to be a crossover. Maybe. Okay. We'll see. You do build stuff in it. You do. You, do, <laughs> you build a bear zoo. Number five. My number five is Woodlands. Mm -hmm. You build a hedge maze. That your little figure then needs to go through and gather or avoid certain things in order to get points. You do some like real time organizing of tiles mm -hmm. uh, while <clears> looking <throat> at the transparency. And then after after the time runs out, everybody picks up the transparency and compares it to make sure their person can go through it. This one didn't make my list even though I thought about it because it didn't enough feel like you were actually building something. It didn't capture the feeling to me. Even though you're literally building a maze? Yeah, but it's <laughs> it's more of just like puzzling it together and then letting the character go through okay. the maze it, is what it kind of felt like to me. So I it, it didn't capture the feeling to me. I don't really take anything away from you, though, for having chose it. It just didn't capture mm -hmm. it for me, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to say about Woodlands? No, that's it. 
Okay, so that was uh, your number five, right? Yes. My number five is Dragon Castle. This is a game where you draft tiles from a board in a similar way to how you used to remove tiles from the old computer game Taipei where you'd match them up and, and take them off. Except in this case, you're then putting them on your own board to be able to build up the Dragon Castle. Uh, when you get uh, the three-dimensional building of the uh, parts of the castle up to certain heights, you can also get uh, like roofing uh, shingles, like these little caps to actually place on them. Uh, and you're, you're trying to build it up into certain, uh, in certain ways to earn the most points. <clears throat> Uh, this uh, has a lot of similarities to some of the games that have been on the list before, like, for instance, like Torres, except this is one you like. Mm -hmm. I know you do like this game. Um, and also the really cool nature of drafting the Mahjong tiles uh, to use them in building this three-dimensional Japanese-style castle is really cool and really fun. I like this one a lot, and that is why Dragon Castle is my number five. Did you want to say anything about Dragon Castle? No, um, I kind of forgot. I, I saw it when I was looking. Oh. But I only remembered, like, the taking off part. I didn't remember that, that you, you build a castle? Build it your, on your own thing. So I was like, oh, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> so you forgot that you actually build stuff in that yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Number four. My number four is Everdell. Mm. So you build a little tableau village yes. in front of you and you uh, inhabit it with little woodland creatures. Yes. Um, Everdell is great. Mm -hmm. It's got a big tree. You're not going to say anything else about it? It's a worker placement game, resource management, and tableau building where you're building, you're building the village. And it really does feel like building of a village and getting to occupy. You get bonuses for actually having um, the creatures occupy the houses. Mm -hmm. It helps you to build the village out quicker and better. Uh, this is a really cool game. And yeah, you have the big three-dimensional tree, which is really awesome. This is a game we've talked about a lot because it makes a lot of our lists. But um, Everdell is a great example of worker placement, resource management, and village slash tableau building, mm -hmm. which is why it's your number... What was it? It was four, four? I think. Okay. So, uh, yeah, great game. My number four is Among the Stars. This is a game that I fell in love with the first time I played it. It hasn't hit the table in a, in a while, but I really want it to hit the table again. It's a game where you're building space stations. Everybody's building their own space stations. And if you really get into the nitty, of gritty, nitty and gritty of building said space stations where you even have to build like power plants, each power plant only having a certain amount of power to be able to support a certain number of rooms. And, and if you're running out of power and wanting to build more rooms, you still have to build more power plants in your space station to further expand outwards. Um, this is the, it's not just the laying of the rooms down. The positioning of them is incredibly important in this game. Um, and yeah, and it is a game where you actually build out your own big, uh, inter interplanetary space station full of, of representatives from all different alien races. And it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And that is why among the stars is my number four favorite game where you build something. Okay. Anything you want to say about among the stars? I forgot about it. Ah. Number three. <clears throat> My number three is Ex Libris, where you're building a library with cards. Yes, go you on. Have, um, you get, uh, you draft cards. It's a worker placement game. Yes, it's a worker placement game. You get cards that has uh, book spines on them. Mm -hmm. And you have a tableau in front of you, and you have to put them in alphabetical order to the best of your ability. It's it's a worker placement game where you get like a couple of regular workers, and then everybody gets an asymmetrical worker with superpowers. Yeah, and you use the work spots to collect the books, and you're trying to build the biggest, most point valued uh, based on your objectives uh, library. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you gotta try to do them in the right alphabetical order. It felt more like alphabetizing than actual building for me, so I I nixed it, but I. I, I almost included it because I was like, oh, you're kind of building the bookshelves in the library. But then, like, it, it, it because of my re extra restriction, okay. I didn't quite make it for me. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not criticizing you for including it because <laughs> I actually, it almost made my list. Okay. All right. So that was your number three. Mm -hmm. My number three is a game where you're building up uh, island settlements and colonies. It is Anno 1800. This is a game that has a lot of worker placement and a lot of tableau building where you are uh, 
drafting tiles of, of, of residences and businesses and such and upgrading said businesses and putting them on your island and getting extra space for your island and building even sometimes a second island because uh, you have these old world islands and these new world islands that you're building colonies on to be like way stations for ships headed to the new world during like you know the the early colonial period when when the various european powers were setting up colonies in the caribbean and the americas in general and uh the game is a lot of fun the drafting of the the buildings and 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 the using them to get points and slowly to upgrade and get more advanced industries because you need lesser industries to get the more advanced industries in the same kind of genres and a lot of them also give you more worker placement spots to place guys on to then upgrade and get better uh better upgraded industries is a lot of fun and also it does feel like you are actually building out a a town on your colony on a island and i really enjoy that and that mm -hmm. is why anno 1800 is my number three this was when i crossed off now why why did you cross off anno 1800 because <clears throat> i know you love this game because it's really i it's really just putting tiles and squares you know oh, really but that's what most games where you build yeah, things feel yeah, like yeah but there's no there's no real reason why you would put um like things in certain areas you know like you're not really building a town because you're you can place it anywhere except for like the shipyard that's for the most part i mean there are exceptions but for the most part that's kind of what um everdell's like too I, I i'm gonna disagree with your 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 choosing everdell and not picking out of 1800 i'm pretty sure there's stuff in everdell where if there's there's next to it. some there's some but a lot of them it could be almost okay. anywhere so i'm gonna disagree with you a little on that Whatever. anyway but there you go number two my number two is calico you are building a quilt <laughs> <laughs> what? Building a quilt. You quilt a quilt. You sew a quilt. You don't build a quilt. Oh <laughs> You're putting together a quilt so cats can lay on it. Yes, you are. And certain cats like to lay on certain patterns. Uh huh. <laughs> so if you want the black and white cat, you need to do like the purple pattern or whatever, whatever pattern they say they want. Okay. And if you want the orange cat, you got to do like a certain pattern, and okay. they come and lay on your quilt. Yes, it that is a pattern you, forming game. Built. It is a pattern forming <laughs> game where you quilt a quilt. You you sew a quilt together. Um, it's a really good game. I did it would never have been one it would have occurred to me. I'm like, when you're like Calico, I'm like, what? I'm like, she's going to say about the, that you build a quilt is like literally what went through my mind. And then you did. You said you build a quilt. Okay. Get the hammer and nails out and, and the saw and build a quilt. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Anything else you want to say about Calico? No. All right. Uh, that was your number two, right? Mm -hmm. My number two is a crossover. It's one you've uh, already mentioned. Okay. Um, would you like to guess, or would you like me to give you a hint? No. Before okay. you guess. Oh come on! It's fun when you. It's fun. To <laughs> I guess. don't remember what I said. Well, you have, you have your list in front of you. I mean, um. For my number two, I'll give you a hint. It's three dimensional, and you've already mentioned it. That's my hint. It's three dimensional. You said you didn't put junk art on. I didn't put junk art on. Everdell? Era? Era. Okay. Because <laughs> ever now you're building three dimensional things, right? Well, the, the berries and the wood is No, the game is three dimensional. <laughs> the tree is three dimensional. Well, okay, we're talking we're talking about era. Okay. Era medieval age. Uh I love this game. Literally we talked about it a bunch when you had it on your mm -hmm. list. Um <clears throat> you again, you're building three dimensional medieval towns and cities. You got you can wool in the cities to get bonus points. Building it in certain ways gives you benefits, gives you extra dice, and then gives you points, and you're trying to get the most points by the end of the game. Uh, it has a lovely three-dimensional pegboard uh, where you use the pegs for keeping track of points and resources as well as use the, the pegboard for placing the, the actual buildings on the board and building your town. Um, Era Medieval Age is a great game. I love it. And that is why it made it all the way down to my number two favorite game where you build something. And now it is time for number one. My number one... <laughs> Get a little drum roll. Is 
Baron Park. <laughs> Are you? Oh, you could have said it was a crossover. Yeah. I, I kind of forgot that we that you hadn't gotten it. Was so it, long it was, ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. <laughs> it was. It was ages ago when I said Baron Park. That was all. What was, what was Baron Park on my list? It was my number six. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, because you're building a bear park. Anything you wanted to add about from what we said when I had it? No. No. So you're just going to, that's it? Yeah. Bear Park. Okay. My number one's a crossover too. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I'm not going to okay. give you any hints. What, what was, what's my number one? You tell me. Everdell? Yes. <laughs> of course it's Everdell. I adore Everdell. Everdell is, it's one of my favorite worker placement games of all time. Um, the mechanics are just a joy. It's very, very fun. And also, obviously, it is my favorite game where you build something in, in regard to my own personal, you know, <laughs> specific restrictions on what it means to build something in a game. We talked a lot about Everdell when we covered it, when it was on your list much earlier. What was what number was Everdell on your list earlier? Um, it is four. Okay, so it, it was your four. I like it even better. It made it all the way down to my number one. Uh, the art is beautiful. The three-dimensional tree is attention-getting. The chunky wooden uh, animal meeples are great. The We have the deluxe version. That's the deluxe um, uh, resources, which look fantastic. Absolutely love Everdell, and it really feels like you're building a little town, uh, possibly in the world of, like, Wind in the Willows, because it's all populated by animals, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, it is a really fun, non-aggro, Euro-style game about building a village and, and using worker placement to do so for your little anthropomorphic animals. Mm-hmm. I absolutely adore it. And I know you don't disagree because it was your number four. Yeah, it makes me want to live in a hollowed out oak tree and just make soup. <laughs> it is a very, co- it's a very cozy game. Would you say that? Yes. It's a very cozy little game. It's very adorable. Um, yeah, but that is our list for our top 10 games where you build something. What did you think of our choices? Uh, what are some of your favorite games where you built something that didn't make our lists? Uh, let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this top 10 list and you'd like to see us do more like it, be sure to give it a like, share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game, game on. on.